It's that time of the year the Nobel Prizes are being announced. Yesterday, the winners of the medicine category were revealed. A team of two scientists, Catalin Carrico and Drew Wiesman, they were awarded for their work on mRNA vaccines. Their research led to this path-breaking technology. But now there is a row, a controversy over who gets credit for this achievement. In an ideal world, this shouldn't even be a question. The scientists deserve all the praise and credit. But in this case, one more party is claiming credit, the University of Pennsylvania. It's an Ivy League institution. This is where these scientists did their research. And now the university is claiming credit. Look at their statement. Catalin Carrico and Drew Wiesman, Penn's historic mRNA vaccine research team, win 2023 Nobel Prize in Medicine. A historic achievement indeed, but here's what the university did not say in the statement. They pushed Kariko out of their team. She's one of the winners. The university forced her to retire some time back. Ten years ago, I was here in October <laughs> because I was kicked out yeah? Yeah. Yeah. from yeah. Penn. I <laughs> yeah. was forced to retire. You heard what she said. Let me tell you the full story. In the 1990s, Kariko was at the Penn University. She was having a rough time. Her bosses were running out of patience. Funding for her research had dried up. She was studying the same subject, the potential of mRNA vaccines. The technology was for which she's got the Nobel Peace Prize, the Nobel Prize for Medicine, sorry. She was studying this and she was researching it. Back in the 90s, Penn University did not see merit in the idea. They refused to allocate more funds for this research. Kariko tried to come up with alternatives. She reached out to external donors, but it did not help. So Penn gave her two options, leave the university or accept a demotion. It was an insult. Kariko was on course to becoming a full professor. Now, Americans have the system called tenure. It basically means a lifetime job. And it gives strong protections and benefits. So achieving tenure is like getting a guarantee. If you become a professor, you never lose your job, unless, of course, it's an extreme case. So you have a lifetime guarantee of sorts. But the path to full professorship is extremely tough. It takes up to 10 years to get there. And Kariko was almost there. But then Penn University demoted her. They lowered her rank. In 2013, she had a new job offer from the pharma company BioNTech. They offered her the post of senior vice president, and she took it. And when she was preparing to leave, she was humiliated by Penn officials. Listen to this. This is Kariko describing her ordeal, and I'm quoting. They told me that they'd had a meeting and concluded that I was not of faculty quality. When I told them that I was leaving, they laughed at me and said BioNTech doesn't even have a website. Well, she left anyway. And as it turns out, she had the last laugh. Her move enabled her to continue the research. And now, after the pandemic, mRNA technology is mainstream. Pfizer joined hands with BioNTech to make the Wuhan virus vaccine. It is based on the same mRNA technology. Its success has made BioNTech a household name. Despite all of this, Penn did not have a change of heart. A few years back, Kariko re returned to research and she rejoined the same university, Penn University, but she was not reinstated with a former title. She's working as an adjunct professor, while her colleague and fellow Nobel laureate, Wiesman, serves as the director of vaccine research. Now, to add insult to injury, the university has rushed to claim credit for her achievement. The scientific community is slamming Penn for this. They're seeking an apology and a promotion for Kariko. We do hope she gets it. And as the world congratulates her, there's also a lesson in her story and why it's important to stay the course. You see, scientific research is never easy. It takes years for researchers to first find a worthy idea, then many more years to produce tangible results. Along the way, they grapple with challenges like funding and securing a place to support their efforts. Even with the right tools, there is always the risk of failure. You may dedicate your life to a subject or a quest and come up with nothing. These challenges deter many students from taking up research as a career path, but these challenges also end in success stories. Whether it is the Nobel Prize for Catalin Carrico or the success of scientists at ISRO, they serve as a lesson. Perseverance wins.